Hey everybody, it's Quincy from All Years and I am here at the Walt Disney World Dolphin Hotel today. We're going to be taking a full tour of the rooms, the dining, the transportation, the shopping, the pool, everything you can think of. We're going to check it out. I'm super excited. I hope you are too. So let's get going. So the first thing that you need to know about the Walt Disney World Dolphin Hotel is that it is not actually an official Disney World Resort Hotel. It is actually run by Marriott and it still has a lot of the Disney World perks. Plus it's located right here in the Epcot area. So still a great location, but yeah, it's run by Marriott and it's not actually an official Disney hotel. As you can tell, this hotel is huge. It is a 27 story main building in this huge pyramid and you've got 1,509 guest rooms. So it's a big old hotel located right here in the Epcot Resort area. You'll notice the theme is pretty tropical, aquatic, and colorful. And the hotel actually has 56 foot dolphins up on the roof. I can't see them from here, but I'll show them to you. As you can clearly see with Spaceship Earth over there, we are located in the Epcot area right on Crescent Lake alongside Disney's Yacht and Beach Club Resorts and Disney's Boardwalk Inn Resort. We've got an awful lot to see, so let's head inside and check out this hotel. So the Dolphin and its sister resort, the Swan, are some of the more unique buildings here in Disney World. That's because they were actually designed by world-renowned architect Michael Graves. They've got a very interesting look to them. Now, unlike the Disney World Resort hotels, you cannot use the My Disney Experience app to do a mobile check-in here at the Dolphin or over at the Swan. So you will have to stop by the front desk when you arrive to just check in traditionally. Of course, they are happy to help you. There's a little bit of a wait right now, but check in is at 3 p.m. and you can even head in early if your room is ready. You'll just need to check at the front desk. Now, Marriott does have an app that allows you to open your door with your phone and check in mobily. But you will have to get that Marriott app if you want to do that. Look at this chandelier. If you look to the right of the chandelier, you'll find concierge, which is obviously more useful than that chandelier, but less interesting. Now, the Dolphin does have a lot of rooms, but it's not that hard to navigate. In fact, we're going to be able to get around pretty easily. Most of what you need to like know about, dining-wise and everything, is directly off of this main lobby or just down the escalators at the other end of the lobby, so it's pretty easy to get around. Our first stop today is going to be at Fuel. This is the first of our dining locations to check out. It is a quick service cafe and market where you can order coffee, sandwiches, snacks. It's open usually pretty early in the morning to around 10 p.m. at night. You know what I'm here for. The answer is coffee. Coffee is what I'm here for. Of course, the first thing that might catch your eye when you head into Fuel is a remarkable sugar sculpture. They do rotate the sugar sculptures that are on display over here in the candy section. Right now, it's a Monsters, Inc. sugar sculpture. We've got Mike Wazowski on his stool. I see Randall looking mischievous as always. Oh, actually, kind of looks sad. That must be Randall when he was bullied in uh, college. <laughs> Looking at this is making me hungry, but I know it wouldn't taste good. Also, I don't really want to eat Mike Wazowski. But yeah, you've got a candy wall in here. I think for most kiddos, that's going to pretty much sell them on this hotel. Lots of grab-and-go options. A lot more than you typically see at like Disney World Resort hotels. Just like chips and breakfast material. There's wine and beers. And like a whole cold case of beverages. Having this much sort of option just as a grab-and-go all day, that's a pretty big plus in my opinion. This is actually the first place we're going to spot some of the exclusive beers that they have here. Any beer that you see the word Fins on was probably brewed in collaboration with the Swan and Dolphin. All for one and Fins for all, Fins and Feathers, which is super neat that they have exclusive beers. Don't let Molly catch wind of that. She already knows. She so already knows. Laughing Cow. There are so many surprises in here. I actually kind of feel like I'm in like a full, like trendy market, like out and about. So this is a pretty impressive quick service offering. So I grabbed an ice caramel macchiato and tell me this doesn't look absolutely delicious. Look at the streaks of caramel in it. Hold on, real quick distraction moment. We're looking at Froyo flavors. They have dulce de leche, chocolate, vanilla, pumpkin. Oh my gosh. You guys, if I'm in here at 10 p.m., sweet coconut and Dole Whip? You're kidding. All right, I find myself a delightful seat here in the lobby. And it's coffee time. Great, moment of truth. Okay, so I can immediately smell that it's espresso. If you don't know a macchiato, an American macchiato, you get the espresso pulled on top. So 
I'd probably just take a sip of straight espresso, but that's kind of a good thing because I got to really taste the quality of their coffee and it's good. That was pretty good espresso. Like I would drink this black espresso from here, but I'm gonna give it a twirl. Action shot. I'm pretty pleased with this. It's got a lot of caramel in it, but it's not overly sweet. So my like first sip, I got no caramel. My second sip, I got a little little glob of caramel. I love, who doesn't love a glob of caramel? It's good coffee, it's a good coffee. I definitely think it stands up to Joffrey's. So if you're staying at the Dolphin, don't feel like you have to wait till you head to the park to get a good cup of coffee. That's even the case with some Disney World hotels is that there's no good coffee. This is doing it for me. We can head to fuel. All right, coffee in hand, we can continue our tour. So here in the lobby, it's closed right now, but you'll notice a full out lobby lounge. This is called Finn's with a PH. And we are gonna stop by here for a little bit of a meal later. Finn's is a full bar. It opens daily at 3.30 and today it's open until midnight. That's probably pretty typical. They've also got beers on draft and they of course have that exclusive Finn's beer because who's better to serve Finn's than Finn's, you know? Now, since the Swan and Dolphin are not Disney World hotels, they do actually have planning centers in the lobby. So if you need access to guest services, that is a perk that you get here, right here at one of the Disney plan uh, planning centers. Now keep in mind these do have wonky hours, sometimes the folks go on break, but you can stop by here if you need any tickets or to make sure that something works with your park reservations, any Disney questions you might have, you can stop by here. All right, so I have my coffee still, but I actually got a surprise and one of my friends from Disney Food Blog is actually here and we are gonna eat some lunch together. So I'm gonna head down to the fountain to eat some lunch with my friend from Disney Food Blog and I'll give you guys a little review while I do that. So you might find yourself on escalators when you're at the Swan or Dolphin. Just a part of the way the building is, it means less stairs for me and I'm a happy camper. But we are actually headed here to the right to our first full dining location of our tour, the Fountain. So the Fountain is a full table service restaurant that is sort of a soda fountain style. They've also got some amazing ice cream treats. And later in the day, you'll even find a grab and go ice cream window open if you wanna get some treats without waiting. This is also one of the least expensive table service restaurants on property, which is pretty neat. It's got more standard prices than you typically see on Disney property. So I'm excited to see what we can snag for a quick lunch. So I'm starting out with the pretzel bites with liquid cheese because, duh, look at the liquid cheese. These are pretty self-explanatory. They're buttery and salty pretzel bites and you dunk them in a cup of what might be cheese and what might be cheese adjacent. Pretzel bite time. These are pretty good. They're not like super crispy, but they are like beautiful soft pretzels. They're super hot, tons of salt, tons of butter. And I was actually pretty surprised. I was expecting the cheese sauce to be like, you know, nacho cheese, but it's got more exciting flavors to it than just plain nacho cheese. So it's pretty good. All right, so for the meal, I went with the Fountain Signature Burger because we are at the Fountain. And that's gonna be two four ounce Angus burgers with smoked bacon, avocado bacon spread, caramelized onions, Roma tomato, and American cheese on a sesame brioche bun. And I'm kind of wowed by how good this burger looks. You get it with your choice of side, and I just went with the classic fries. And anyone who gets any of the burgers or sandwiches on the menu, they do come with fries, but for an upcharge of $2, you can get sweet potato fries or onion rings. All right, this burger is crazy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go for it. There's a lot happening here. And I mean that in a very good way. It's almost difficult to pick out any of the individual flavors because they mesh together so well. And I honestly think the like root thread is the American cheese. Listen, I know American cheese is not the best kind of cheese, but it is the best kind for making those beautiful melty layers on a burger like this. Um, this is a huge portion for not that expensive. The bacon is crispy and crunchy. The bacon avocado spread has amazing flavor. And I think kind of just the best part is the caramelized onions or maybe the brioche bun. I don't know, it's a very good burger. I would get this again in a heartbeat, especially because it's not overly expensive. All right, and I'm typically eating Disney fries on resort tours, but these aren't Disney fries, these are dolphin fries, so. They're pretty good, they're golden. Ooh, actually, they're really good. They've got a nice, super potato-y flavor on the end, but they've got a great crisp on the outside, but just enough potato meat on the inside. Um, yeah, I'm gonna shovel these all in my mouth. I also just want to point out how structurally sound this is. I've taken a huge bite out of it and cut it in half and it's still like, I could 
Okay, well, a little fell out when I just shook it, but maybe don't shake your burger. And since I am here with the friends, we're splitting our sandwiches. So she got the buffalo chicken grilled cheese. It looks golden, buttery, and amazing, and I'm excited to try it. Wow, they like soak this bread and butter. And it's got like real buffalo sauce on there. Like it's actually got a little bit of heat to it. Tons of just beautiful shredded chicken. Um, there's a buffalo grilled cheese over at ABC Commissary and Disney's Hollywood Studios. And this is like leagues better. It's so, so, so good. So if you're on the hunt for buffalo grilled cheese and the dolphin isn't too far out of your way, consider stopping by the fountain. And we got onion rings. So I'm dunking them in some remoulade trying them out. They know how to fry stuff here. <laughs> also, that remoulade tastes like the sweetest, most delicious pickle relish based sauce ever. So, I'm, I mean, I, I actually think these are worth the $2 upcharge, although the fries are great too. So, if you're in a fries mood, you can stick with the fries. Overall, I'm pretty impressed. And the fact that this is a table service meal and most of the entree portions are under $20 is a very big plus in Disney World. So unfortunately, the ice cream window doesn't quite open till four. They're setting it up right now, but I was not able to get ice cream with my dinner. So I think I'll come back here for a little dessert later if I have time. All right, lunch had, of course I have leftovers because that sandwich was huge. So I think I'm gonna get all checked in and then head to the room to drop those off before we continue looking around. All right, I'm back in the lobby. Leftovers are gone, and we have more touring to do. So across the lobby from Disney Guest Services here, you'll find shopping, where there are two stores. There's the Disney Gifts and Sundries, and then Accents. So even though the Dolphin is not a Disney hotel, technically, they still have a store where you can grab all your Disney needs. So let's go check it out. All right, this is certainly one of the smaller resort stores, which makes sense considering this isn't a Disney resort, but they've got the standard set of stuff that you might be looking for. I see ears, apparel for kiddos and adults alike. Oh, look, the Mickey Mini Runaway Railway ears. I like those. They've got toys and plushes, some collectible pins, some magic bands. I would say if you got your mind on a specific souvenir, you would probably want to grab it when you see it in the parks. Not sure you're going to be able to find it here. And they've got the standard Disney essential shelves as well, plus a few snacks, some like candy and granola bars, chips and waters. I really like to grab granola bars before heading to the park because that usually is enough to hold me over while I get my coffee until I make it to a heartier lunch. And then just next to that Disney Gifts and Sundries is Accents, which is a third party store that has um, merch that you won't find at other Disney World Resort hotels because it's not Disney merch. Oh my gosh, they have a whole sunscreen display. Did they hear I was coming? Definitely a nice vacationer store in here. I see lots of apparel for both ladies and men, some jewelry and things like that. Could be a good place if you're looking for a non-Disney souvenir to run into accents while you're here. <gasps> soap! Look at this fancy soap! Wow! Now the dolphin is a little bit like a maze. However, there's a ton of signage, so you probably won't find yourself getting too lost. Just down the hall from the main lobby and from the stores we were just in, you'll find Shula's Steakhouse. So this is a very elegant steakhouse that is decorated with heavy dark woods. When you're heading up to the steakhouse, you'll see a lot of football memorabilia. And that's because this restaurant is named for Don Shula, the famous NFL coach. Reservations are accepted for Shula's Steakhouse and it does serve dinner only. Molly does plan on eating here for her steak throwdown video. So we'll see how that does for her full review. It looks like it'll be a very nice meal just from the decor. I've heard really good things. Just keep in mind if you're headed to Shula's that they do serve dinner only. So you can see it's closed right now because it's not dinner time yet. All right, we're crossing past the lobby again to check. Oh my gosh, wait, R2D2. Is that R2? I think that's green and not blue. So that must not be R2, but it is an R2 droid. This is a cute little Star Wars Galaxy's Edge photo op they have in the lobby. Okay, as I was saying, we are checking out Mandara Spa. So yes, Dolphin does have a spa on the premises, which is super cool. Obviously a massive perk for those of us who like a little pampering. Mandara Spa is a 12,000 square foot retreat inspired by ancient Asian art and relaxation techniques. There are 13 treatment rooms, two couple suites, a steam room, a tea garden, and a meditation garden 
all featured in Mandara Spa. So you've got a resort day. Why not make it a spa day? Something else to note about Dolphin and this one is that this hotel did used to be included in Walt Disney World bus transportation with the actual Walt Disney World buses. That is no longer the case. However, Swan and Dolphin still do provide transportation to all of the theme parks via bus or boat for Epcot and Hollywood Studios. The boats obviously are still Disney, but the buses are Mirrors buses, Mirrors shuttle buses. If you follow signage out in the front of the building, you'll head on over to the bus stop. Now, this bus transportation is pretty great. I mean, it's just like Disney bus transportation where the buses come about every 20 minutes and get you to the parks. One thing to keep in mind is if you are busing to Magic Kingdom, you will not be dropped off at the Magic Kingdom bus stop where the Disney buses drop off. Instead, you will be dropped off at the Transportation and Ticket Center and have to take a monorail, ferry boat, or bus across to Magic Kingdom. So make sure that you budget in that time because that trip across Seven Seas Lagoon can certainly take an added 20 minutes, maybe longer, depending on the crowd. But you've even got this handy dandy guide for transportation. Don't forget if you don't want to take those buses or boats, you do have complimentary parking at the Disney theme parks for staying here at the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin, just like you would at a regular Disney World Resort. So you can go and park at the theme parks too, if you happen to have your car with you. But we aren't going to the theme park till tomorrow. We're having a resort day, so I'm going back inside. Speaking of having your car with you, if you do drive to the Swan and Dolphin, parking is a charge of $23 per day or $33 if you do valet. And you can use your room key to get in and out of the parking lot, so make sure you do not lose that. Keep it with you. Lots of signage talking you through this. If you have any questions, make sure to just ask the front desk. They'll be happy to clear up those parking charges for you. All right, so this is the main entrance to the Dolphin. And I know what you're thinking. Why is there another park chair? That's probably not what you were thinking, but it's what I was thinking, and I know why. And I'm gonna tell you. So these entrances over here do lead to the 254,000 square foot Dolphin Convention Center, which has a 56,000 square foot exhibit hall, 72 meeting rooms. Good golly, that's a lot of meeting rooms. Three ballrooms and three boardrooms. So huge, huge, huge convention center here. You know I like to walk around a convention center. Unfortunately, <laughs> there is a convention going on today, so I don't want to bother those folks getting their conventioning on. So we'll just have to look beyond the outside looking in. Something to keep in mind with the convention center is it does have a business center and that's available not only to those conventioneers but also to Swan and Dolphin guests. So if you do need have any business needs while you're here, I feel like I always need to print things and I never have a printer, then you can head over to the business center that's in the convention center. So right when you enter is actually my favorite room because there are little like sparkles in the ceiling. I don't know, I don't even know if you can see them, but they do kind of look like they're the night sky, which I like. All right, I'm gonna head back over and check out some more of the dining. I am not hungry yet, that, that sandwich was huge. But I think that I'll go see what other options you have while you're staying here at the Dolphin. I'm on the escalator again. Only Disney World, only like, not technically a Disney World hotel, but look, there's escalators. It's novel, it's fun. Look at that chandelier. Still not quite there on that ice cream, so no ice cream for you until 4 p.m., at least while I'm here today, which is unfortunate, but maybe fortunate because I'm not supposed to eat dairy. But I do anyway. And enough of the fountain. Just across the way, you've got Todd English's Blue Zoo. So Blue Zoo is a seafood restaurant by Todd English. It opened in late December 2003. It's open for a late lunch, early dinner, and they're known to be pretty darn good if you like seafood especially. Got some signature cocktails here on the menu. And you can find more of the dining if you pass the fountain, say hi to our table from earlier, and head down to like this extra hallway that's not on the end here. I'm telling you, this resort's a little confusing, but tons and tons and tons of signage. So Fresh Mediterranean Market is actually closed while I'm here today, but typically this spot does serve breakfast uh, and lunch. Breakfast is a buffet usually. It's open more seasonally, so it might not be open during your stay, but it's certainly a great option for something different. Lots of big windows in there. Just a nice, easy breakfast option when it is open. And continuing down this hallway, you'll find Peekaboo or Peekaboo. Oh my gosh, look, how cute. They direct you over to the restaurant. 
Picavu is a cafeteria service uh, restaurant and a 24-hour convenience store. We have it downstairs at the Dolphin. Pretty empty in here right now. Now those hours are subject to change and there's a little bit of construction going on right now. So just check with the front desk if you are interested in Picavu to make sure you have the correct hours. This lower floor is also home to a game room, which looks pretty impressive. Lots of games, old and new in here for you to play. Super fun. And guest laundry is down here as well. The machines are card operated, but there's change machines if you need them or anything like that. Even a couch for you to wait for your laundry and a vending machine with laundry detergent. So Camp Dolphin is down here as well, which is actually a child care center. And they do have a variety of packages available. So it's really cute. They've got like a little photo up outside. They have themes in there. So this is great if you need a place for your kiddos to go while you're having a more grown up dinner at Shula's or heading over to the Swan for one of their dining options. So very, very neat. And the Dolphin Health Club is down here as well. It is available 24 hours. And something super unique about it is that included in that $40 resort fee that you pay, you actually get the fitness classes that they offer here. All right, let's head outside, shall we? Of course, we have seen all the dining at the Dolphin, but, well, except for the pool bar, we'll get there. But you can also take a really short walk right across to the Swan for all of their dining options. And then of course, also to the Boardwalk, the Beach Club, the Yacht Club, and even into Epcot if you have a ticket and a Disney Park Pass reservation. So, so much dining at this like prime location hotel. Again, don't you worry about signage. Even though this resort has a bit of a confusing layout inside, signage everywhere inside and outside to help you get around. Now the Swan and the Dolphin do share a pool area and it is pretty impressive. So I am here at the pool closest to the Dolphin, which is the lap pool. And it actually touches right up to the Cabana Beach Hut. The pool vibes out here are unmatched. Look at all these hanging curtains. It's gonna be straight pool vibes. So this is Cabana Bar and Beach Club, which is located right next to the pool and it's a casual eatery. They've got full food here. Burgers and salads are the general mix, but also of course you've got pool drinks. Looks like they have a full bar. Very nice place to fuel up for your pool day. There's some added recreation out here like ping pong, pool, giant chess, cornhole, and a basketball hoop. Heading into the main pool area, you'll see that the pools kind of have like a rocky brim to them. Little kiddie pool for the kiddos. I just say this is not very busy while I'm here today. Uh, most of the Disney World Resort pools tend to get like super, super busy every single day. So it's kind of surprising that there's like a lot of empty pool here. I don't know if that will be the case when you stay here, but it could. We can dream. There are several spas available out here as well. All of them next to little waterfalls, which you had a waterfall and that's just like instant relaxation. You know what I mean? The Cabana Beach Hut is located near the pool. And right now they even have airbrush tattoos out, which is super cool. But there are lots of supplies and rentals to help you have a great pool day. Also sunscreen, wear it folks. There are cabanas available for rent for your pool day. And the real main event here is the Grotto Pool, which has this huge waterfall. And yes, those are pool chairs behind it. You can relax back there. Keep in mind that this pool area is available to swan guests, dolphin guests, and guests at the Swan Reserve, which we can see right there. So it certainly has the potential to get crowded. A lot of guests do have access to this area. And perhaps the most unique and my favorite thing about this pool is that they have mobile food ordering that you can do from your pool or lounge chair and a team member will bring that out to you. So you can scan the keys that are attached to every single pool chair and your food will come right out, which is awesome. Talk about a plus to your pool day. Now your guest room key is kind of the key to the world at the Dolphin. It's your key to parking, getting in and out of the parking lot. It's your key to making sure that you're a guest when you're at the pool. Lots of purpose. It's even your key to getting towels at the pool. So definitely keep that guest key on you. Not so much a concern at the Disney World hotels because you have your magic band or your magic mobile on your phone, but keep that room key on you when you're staying at Dolphin or Swan. Now you might be mostly concerned with access to the theme parks, but the Dolphin also provides really easy access to Fantasia Gardens Miniature Golf, which is my favorite of the two mini golf courses here in Disney World. It is Fantasia themed and it is just across the street from the Swan and Dolphin. There's a crosswalk with a stoplight and everything. So you can head right across pretty easily and get your mini golf on. Swan and Dolphin also share a beach area. There are tons of lounge chairs out here. I will say it doesn't look like mobile ordering extends to the beach. What a bummer. 
But there is a bonfire pit. There's a boardwalk if you want to walk on the beach but don't want to get sand in your shoes. The recreation at Swan and Dolphin is pretty impressive. So if you have a resort day, you're definitely not going to run out of things to do unless you like don't like doing a lot of them. But there's volleyball, there's cornhole, there's games, pool games, lots of food, an amazing pool, and even these Swan paddle boats. So these paddle boats are available on a seasonal basis and the rentals do happen from the cabana hut, which we passed earlier. So you can head out here and even paddle around this little lagoon. If you're interested, just go ahead and ask at the cabana hut if they're available that day. And you might be able to rent a swan to boat around in. Very romantic. Pals, I just got so much sand in my shoes. I'm wearing sandals. <laughs> so I guess maybe sneakers would have been better. It's like all stuck under my foot. It's not comfortable. This resort also gives you access to tennis courts and a basketball court, plus a running path. So you can check out your resort map that they'll give you upon check-in to make sure you can find where those are. But tons of recreation, so much recreation. Also shared between the two resorts is a standard children's playground. Super fun for kiddos. In fact, there's a lot of kiddos playing on it right now. And here is that walking path across the street to the Swan Reserve and to Fantasia Gardens Mini Golf. I've said it before and I'll say it again, another benefit of the Dolphin is its proximity to the Swan and the other Disney resorts that are on Crescent Lake here in the Epcot Resort area. That just means a lot more access to dining, a lot more access to just exploring and things like that. So I'm just gonna take a little stroll here. This is the long way I'm taking. So there's the Swan. There's this bridge straight across and it's actually all covered. So even if it's pouring rain, you can get across while staying dry because there's the dolphin. But I've just walked all the way around the pool area here. Definitely let me know in the comments if you want to see a full tour of this one as well. I'd love to do it. I probably will, but let me know if you want me to do it soon. Molly and I were taking a boat uh, from Hollywood Studios back to the Epcot Resorts a couple weeks ago. And we saw a bald eagle sitting on the head of the swan. I was like, first of all, bird deception. Second of all, bald eagles? So in this little crossover area, this is where you'll find the boat launch to get to Hollywood Studios and Epcot. Something to keep in mind with these boats is that they do stop at the other Crescent Lake resorts. So the boat ride can be a little longer than you might expect it to be, even though it's a pretty straight shot to both Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios. The boats do stop at Yacht Club, well, Yacht and Beach Shared stop, but Yacht Club and Beach Club, Boardwalk, and then they go to Epcot or Hollywood Studios. This is the last stop before heading that way to Hollywood Studios, and it is the first stop before heading that way to Epcot. We are headed to Epcot tomorrow to wrap up our staycation, so we'll have to see if we end up taking the boat or walking, because it is about a 10 to 15 minute walk to Epcot from here, and a 15-ish to 20 minute walk to Hollywood Studios from here, closer to 15. So I'm going to make the decision depending on how long the lines are in the morning, but we'll see because I do love a walk, but I also love a boat. Of course, with this convenient location, you can also spot the Epcot and sometimes Hollywood Studios fireworks from just outside of your hotel. So if you hop on out, take a look for those harmonious fireworks in the evening, you might catch them. You can check your My Disney Experience app, of course, to see what time those fireworks go off to make sure you're out here for a nice view. All right, that's pretty much the whole King Caboodle when it comes to the dolphin, but now we gotta talk about, is it worth it? So you do get a lot of perks here that are the same as many of the Walt Disney World hotels. You get that transportation to Disney attractions, theme park parking, package delivery when and if it returns after the closures last year. You get early theme park entry here and you also get access to guest services right in your hotel. The biggest pro here, as it is with any of these hotels in this area, is going to be the location. The ability to walk or boat to two parks from right outside your hotel is a major plus. In fact, it's one of the biggest perks I think that any hotels have in Disney World, which is why I love staying here in the Epcot Resort area. You've also got tons of dining options when you stay here, both in the hotel, over at the other hotels nearby, and pretty close at Epcot and Disney's Hollywood Studios if you have a park ticket. These hotels also tend to have a little bit better of a price. They are Marriott hotels, so they come with a little bit lower the, of that Disney premium. So definitely check out what sort of deals you can get on rooms here. You might find that you can get a cheaper stay here than at one of the Disney World Resort hotels with comparable amenities. Look at this tiny duck. <gasps> Look at him dive. It's like it teleported. Is that even a duck? 
some of the cons of this hotel is that they do tend to be favored by convention groups and tours. So depending on when you come, it could be busy and you might be able to check that in advance of you booking your trip, but you also might not, it might be a surprise. It's also lacking in that Disney feeling. The Disney World Resort hotels have that Disney feel. It feels a little magical to stay there. This hotel, although it does have very interesting architecture and a lot going for it, it definitely feels a little bit more like a plain old hotel than the other Disney hotels. So if that's kind of a deal breaker for you, that's something to consider and to weigh against the price and other things. And a big one, it might have a better price, but this hotel also comes with fees. So make sure you are aware of those before you decide that this is where you wanna stay, because that's gonna ramp up that price a little bit. I mean, a $40 resort amenities fees is nothing to scoff at. Those parking fees are not anything to scoff at. So certainly, certainly, certainly keep that in mind. All right, so we checked out the whole resort. All that's left is to check out the room and maybe grab a drink from Finn's later. All right, and I'm back at Finn's. They are playing golf on the TV, so if you like watching sports, Finn's might be the place to do it. But I think we're gonna have some exclusive beer and maybe a snack of some kind. All right, so at the time, Finn's didn't have their food offerings. So make sure you double check that in advance if you're looking to dine there, but no biggie. These fuel is still open, so I'm gonna grab a snack from in here. I need that with my drink. All right, so from Fuel, I went with the chopped romaine lettuce with lemon garlic dressing, garlic croutons, and shaved Parmesan cheese. It's a Caesar salad. So it's just a classic. I'm not super hungry because I had that heavy lunch at the fountain. And I went with the Fins and Feathers, which is a pale ale that is actually an exclusive beer. It's brewed locally in Lakeland, Florida, has a 6.01% alcohol. And it's a collaboration with Brew Hub and the Swan and Dolphin. So it is actually really rare. You can only get it here at Finn's and at the brewery. So it's a must try according to the menu. I'm interested, I love a pale ale. And I'm gonna grab a sip of my beer first. Usually I wouldn't grab a beer at like a fancy lounge like this, but since it is exclusive, I thought it was the right choice. Let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good. It's not too complex or crazy or anything. It's kind of just a very balanced light beer, um, which is right up my alley. So. No fruit flavors or anything like that. It's just a classic pale ale, but it's well developed. I can taste some hops, but not in an overpowering way like I would in an IPA. So this is really good if you're a beer drinker and you're at Swan and Dolphin. I definitely recommend giving this a try, especially since you can't really get it anywhere else. And Caesar salad time, I got a nice bite with dressing, cheese, and croutons. It's about what you expect. It's a basic Caesar salad. Um, pretty solid portion, lots of romaine lettuce. Lots of shredded cheese. It comes with Kin Caesar dressing, so it's a pretty good classic Caesar dressing. The croutons are more soft than they are crunchy, which is good for my fork, but not as good as crunchy croutons from a texture standpoint. Yeah, I certainly wouldn't grab this if I was looking for like a super tasty meal, but I will say the salad was under $7. It was super easy to just grab it and have like a meal really quickly. They have a couple salad options like the chef salad and things like that. So. I would get this again, especially if I were working and in this area on the boardwalk. Um, so that might be an option if you just need something quick, you want to grab something, or you're just on a total sugar overload and just want a salad. They have some good ones over at Fuel. All right, so to get in your room, you have a swan dolphin room key. You scan on your little Wi-Fi thing, and you're in. All right, let's take a look around. So right when you come in the door, you'll notice that there's a pretty sizable walking space in this room. It definitely is on the larger side as Disney World hotel rooms go. Um, maybe not quite like standard deluxe size, but this is certainly larger than all of the values and many of the moderates that I've been in. you got the standard stuff on your doors. You've got door locks, which include a deadbolt and a... What are these called? A little, blo a little blocker thing. How do you do this? Your closet space are sliding folding doors right by the entrance. And you've got an extra pillow and blanket in here, as well as coat hangers with a note about valet service. If laundry or dry cleaning services are something you need, iron, ironing board, luggage rack, and more hangers, and of course, a safe. So, keep your valuables safe and this is definitely a good enough closet space for you to toss your bags in um, I think maybe if you had four adults staying in here you might have to leave some out of the closet but overall this room has plenty of space for you to keep your bags look at how wibbly wobbly the carpet is in here 
Very, lots of wibbles and wobbles down there. Hmm, interesting. My favorite part of this room is this little like counter with some necessities on it. So something to note here is that these bottled waters are included in the resort fee that you pay when you check in to the Swan and Dolphin. There is a mandatory resort services package here, but that includes internet calls, the fitness clubs, two bottled waters, um, and occasionally fitness classes, plus the pool and recreation, um, paddle boat rentals, and s'mores fun kits and things like that. So ask the front desk what's available while you're there, but those two bottled waters are included in your resort fee. You get two per day, which is a pretty great perk because I drink a lot of sink water when I'm on resort tours. This little area is also awesome because it does have the Mr. Coffee machine, which comes with Starbucks coffee. Now, I like Joffrey's, I do, but I, I think that I would be lying to myself if I didn't say that Starbucks is my, is my one true love. I used to work at a Starbucks and this has Tazo tea, including wild sweet orange. So you're not just limited to like standard breakfast and green tea, like usual Pike place roast and decaf. I don't know. I'm pretty wild with the little personal Starbucks setup. I will be having some of this in the morning. We'll head into the bathroom a little later, but you will see that there's a single vanity in here. Whereas this room does have not much vanity space, but there's a big mirror, which is always helpful. I put on my sweatshirt because I was cold. And oh, my favorite part of any hotel room, does it have the zoom side? <laughs> it does. It's kind of like a fun house mirror. <laughs> Lots of outlets in these rooms, and most of the outlets do have USB ports built in. Also, if you're near a light, odds are you're near an outlet. Most of the lights have outlets and USB ports built in. Oh my gosh, I was about to talk and my dad just sent me the dumbest dad joke in the whole world. So in the Dolphin, you've got the Weston Heavenly Bed, which is a Marriott bed model, which features a pillow top mattress, a white goose down comforter, and four overstuffed pillows. And I don't know if it's going to be as good as it sounds, but I'm actually really excited to sleep here because that description sounds amazing. Bed science is going to be exciting today because we're not on Disney beds. We're on the Weston Heavenly Bed. The Western Heavenly Bed. <laughs> Something very important to keep in mind about the Dolphin is that your room will likely have two double beds instead of two queen beds. Now, this might not be that big of a deal to you, but I know that I can really feel the difference between a double and a queen. So it depends if that's something that is a big issue for you. If you need a queen bed for you and your partner, whoever you're staying with, then just keep that in mind when you're booking the dolphin. You might want to look into a king bedroom. Speaking of which, the dolphin does have a variety of room options, including those that feature two double beds, king beds, deluxe rooms, rooms with no view like ours, resort view, Epcot view rooms, and some with balconies. There are also suites available. So pretty wide variety of rooms here. So you can check out what's available when you're looking at your booking. And rates do vary based on room level views, beds, time of year, and special offers. But they tend to hang around the $280 to $300 range and can hit around $450 to around $500 on busier times. Keep in mind, too, that all rooms do require that mandatory resort fee of $35 plus tax. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't see those fees with Disney World Resort Hotels. These rooms do feel a lot more like traditional hotel rooms than Disney World rooms, Disney Resort rooms, which makes a lot of sense. You've kind of got this dual headboard behind the beds, four pillows on each. And yes, I will be putting all eight pillows on my bed to build a nest for myself. And that's just who I am. I also will note that there is a much heavier comforter on these beds than on Disney beds. Like, this is weighty, whereas Disney beds, you kind of just have a top sheet and a very thin blanket. The art in here is lovely and kind of generic. It's pretty and nice to look at, but kind of comboed with the carpet and the choice of furniture. I do get doctor's office waiting room vibes a little bit. It's certainly not homey in here. It feels like a hotel room, but it does feel very clean um, and very, like, neat. Good amount of space between the beds here and a sizable bedside table. Now, there aren't any on the outsides of the bed. But there is one big bedside table in the middle with two big cubby spaces below it for storage while you're here. You have this big cube lamp. And here's something you don't see in Disney World hotels. There is an alarm clock here. You don't actually have clocks in your Disney World hotel room. Now, that might be changing as they introduce the Hey Disney Alexa option next year, which you can learn about on All Ears Net. But right now, no clocks in your Disney World hotel room. You'll find access to your telephone here, 
plus a writing pad and notes about what sort of your telephone rates will look like, which is very helpful. But many of those are in, uh, included in the resort fee. Let's see what under bed space looks like. I'm not thinking that there's very much. Yeah, so that's about the regular under bed space. It's standard. This is going to be like your bed at home. Um, not too much going on down here. You're not going to be able to slide a regular suitcase under there. And something to keep in mind is that Disney beds either have a ton of underbed space or none. So you don't usually have to remember to check for any missing belongings when you leave. But always, always, always have someone in your party duck and check under the beds before you leave. That's a rule that my mom has instilled in me and now I shall pass it on to you. Always check under the beds. If you don't, you will lose something. Thermostat's pretty easy to use. I've already turned it up to 73 degrees because it was freezing when I came in here. I just think they're pumping the air conditioning outside. And since it is getting a little later at night, it's not as hot outside. So it was, it was cold when I got in. You've got this sort of like cute little doctor's office style chair over here. It's just a nice little armchair. Great for some extra seating. Plus a full desk, which you know I love because I do like to do some work on my resort tours usually with a nice chair and a good standing lamp behind it. Curtains wise, you have these nice sheer privacy curtains, which are important. And then added blackout curtains, which are very important for nappers. They are just kind of an easy gray material, but they look like they block plenty of light. And then we'll check out our view a little more in the morning, but we do have a no view room. That doesn't mean you won't have a window, but it does mean that your view might be like ours, which is the hotel receiving and deliveries bay. Not exactly the prettiest view of Disney World. Then across from the bed, you've got your dresser unit and your TV. Pretty sizable TV. It actually looks like it's a few inches bigger than the standard Disney Room Hotel TVs. And interestingly enough with this, there's this message on the screen for you to scan a QR code and use your phone as the remote. So it's easier for you to kind of control the different entertainment options. But there's a regular remote too if you want it. Storage-wise in the dresser here, you have four drawers and they are big. These are sizable drawers. There's plenty of space in there. All of them are the same size. And then on the end here, you do have this cabinet, which opens to your mini fridge, which is a little smaller than the Disney model. So there's actually two more water bottles in here. I'm pretty sure only two are included in your resort fee per day, but I have four in my room, so a mystery. One other thing to note that's especially important for us tomorrow morning is that express checkout is an option. Unlike Disney, you cannot just leave your room and call it a day here, but that doesn't mean you have to go by the front desk. They do have an express checkout option where you can text the last name on your reservation, your room number, and your departure time, and you can get your express checkout. You can also do it through your in-room phone, drop your key off in the box near the elevator, and skip those lines at the front desk. So that's pretty easy. We will certainly be trying that express checkout in the morning. And we're also gonna have to drop our bags with bell services since we're gonna be checking out before I leave the parks tomorrow because I'm headed to Epcot for an Epcot day and I am excited about it. But I don't wanna carry all my bags around the whole time. So we'll check out bell services and express checkout in the morning. So let's head into the bathroom. The bathroom is located right off of the like entrance hallway and there's no door into the actual like sink vanity area. You've got this very well lit mirror. I can already tell that I'm going to be squinting at how bright this is when I'm doing my makeup in the morning. Then you have a single vanity here, so not a ton of vanity space, especially if you've got uh, multiple adults in this room. Tissues, Le Grand Bain facial bar, that means the big bath <laughs> facial bar, and some hand towels. Very pretty sink. And then below, you've got plenty of towels, a hair dryer, and a few more hand towels. Your toiletries are on a shelf on the wall here with a few water cups, plus shampoo, conditioner, body lotion, another facial bar, and a bath bar. There is a door headed into the commode and shower room, so you can have some privacy. It does lock. Big full-length mirror here. Hello. Plus, you've got a commode and another one of these, like, generic but still pretty... Oh my gosh, you can see my reflection in this. Generic but still pretty blueprint here. And then a standard-sized bathtub. Bunch of places to hang towels in here. Standard shower curtain, and you've got this type of shower head with your controls down here. Let's see what that strength is like. Oh my gosh, that's high pressure. And there are a few places for your soap in the corner as well. Dolphin bedside time. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it like a dolphin. 
Oh, that um, like caught me very softly. It was like a, like usually there's a little bit of like springiness on the Disney beds. Whereas this, I kind of felt like I was being caught by like a gentle cloud. That bodes well for the quality of this bed. I'm not gonna say it's a lot softer than the Disney beds. It's definitely still firm. Although I think I can feel that like pillow top to it where it's got a little bit of sink before it hits firm. I think that's good because some people prefer firm, some people prefer soft, so it's good to have a nice moderate in hotel rooms. Um, I'm really curious about these beds. That description made me excited. You know what we have to test? These overstuffed pillows. Will they stand up to the Disney pillow? <sighs> hmm. All right, so I'm not having a lot of head sinkage here, which I understand because Disney pillows are softer. They have a lot of head sinkage. Um, so these don't, these aren't wowing me like the Disney pillows do. They're super soft. They're just firmer than my personal taste. Um, I don't know. I'm feeling optimistic about the sleep quality on this bed. So I'll report it in the morning. All right. Well, big day of resort touring down. I am so tired. I've got a fun day at Epcot plan tomorrow as my staycation continues. So I'm going to go ahead and head to bed for extended eight hour bed science. And I'll see you guys in the morning. Movie magic time. Good morning. I am ready for a big day at Epcot and we've got a few things to do before we head out. So first of all, I've got to do my express checkout, which I'm going to do by texting the front desk like I showed you guys yesterday. Then I do need to drop my bag down at Bell Services. And then I think we're either going to walk or take the boat over to Epcot for early theme park entries. So I'm super excited. Real quick though, I told you I'd show you that view in the daylight. See, it's thrilling. It's the loading dock and like the air conditioning. Not the best view in the world. Oh, also, I want to tell you that last night I found out that you can watch YouTube on these TVs. So I had a blast. Listen, I'm not saying that you could watch All Ears while you were here, but you could definitely watch All Ears while you were here. So remember, you cannot just leave like you can at a regular Disney hotel. You do need to check out either at the front desk or by using Express Checkout. So all you do for Express Checkout is text the number that's posted on this paper in your room with your name of on the reservation, your room number, and your departure time. And then you can just drop your key off at the checkout box near your elevator and head on out. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, so while I head over to drop my bags off, gotta tell you about how the beds were. Um, and they were super comfy. They were actually, I think, comfier than a Disney bed. I don't know what it was. I, I do think the pillows still went at Disney, but those beds were real comfy. I was a happy camper. All right, time for a quick stop by the bell stand to drop off my bags. All right, so here's the plan. There are two ways to get to Epcot from the Swan. You can take the boat or you can walk. We're gonna see what our timing looks like and lines look like at the boat dock. Um, and then we'll walk if it looks busy or, I mean, it's honestly pretty cool outside, so I kind of want to walk. Let's see. All right, so here's the deal. A boat is here and there's a bit of a group headed to Epcot, but I almost wonder if I can beat the boat. So I'm gonna keep track of its route and then see how long it takes me to walk and how long it takes the boat to get there so that we know both. So I am headed towards Epcot at 9.15 exactly. Early park entry starts at 9.30. I'm a little bit later than I wanted to just because Bell Services took me a second, but I still think we might be able to make it on time if I keep up a good pace. Let's find out. Remember that you can take the Friendship Boats to Epcot or Disney's Hollywood Studios and the each ride is around 10 minutes. You will be stopping at the resorts around Crescent Lake, so just keep in mind that might elongate depending on how long it takes people to load and unload and such. Now your walk to Epcot will take you around Crescent Lake, but there's also a path to Hollywood Studios that kind of goes along the canal back behind Swan and Dolphin. And that is about a 15 to 20 minute walk depending on your pace. One of the longer walks, but it's still nice. Looks like it might beat me. We're in a foot race. Well, a boat race, I guess. I'm part boat. All right, the boat beat me by about one minute to Epcot, but my walk was about 12 minutes. You're probably looking at 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your pace. And I think it's probably a toss up, which is better, the boat or the walk, or which is faster, I should say. If you don't want to start your day with a ton of walking when you're headed to Epcot, 
then don't be afraid to hop on that boat. All right, I've got a big Epcot day ahead of me, so I think that's probably about it for our tour of the Walt Disney World Dolphin Hotel. I learned a lot today. This was a super unique tour. If you had as much fun as I did, go ahead and like and subscribe, and let me know in the comments what other hotels you want to see me tour. You can follow us on social media at All Ears Net, and until next time, I'll see you soon. Bye. Want more All Ears videos? Click here. And want to subscribe? You can do that right here. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you real soon.